morning everybody, this is Randy Kennard with Maine Wildlife Management. Today we're in Bucksport chasing skunks. <clears throat> so on this particular job, we get this really nice solid foundation. Uh, but there's a section in between the two, between an addition on the left and the main house, uh, where there's just a bunch of little stones put in place. Just a couple here. A couple bricks. It was actually, you know, just kind of like a temporary little filler. There's a couple stones you see in there. It's kind of a rough foundation. <clears throat> uh, but there's plenty of room there where the skunks are coming in. And there's a nice little crawl space down there. I'm not sure if this camera will pick it up or not. Oh, probably not well. Alright, we had to cut that out because it got all banged around. But, <clears throat> so it's coming around. We see a couple tracks right over there. We've got a number of them that have gone across the snow and then down around the corner they're all coming around the house and they're coming around everywhere. So on this particular place, what I most want to talk about is one-way doors. Uh, there's a lot of advocacy online for folks to use one-way doors and they do work in some situations. In this particular area we can use a one-way door. Let's see if we can show this and fix it up. Since you can put this against the wall Skunk can push its way out, closes, and when the skunk tries to come back in, it can't, it can't get that door open. Those work really well in a situation where the skunk can't dig its way back in. So in this situation, the whole house is a granite and concrete foundation, which is super solid, uh, really strong. This is the only little weak spot in the whole building. So we can use a one-way door here, and the skunk can go off. And, and go to the neighbors. Um, it's They're already going to the neighbors anyway. They already know this neighborhood. So using a one-way door in this situation is actually far more humane than y trapping and removing and relocating. Uh, when you relocate an animal, it has to fight for food, water, shelter, compete with other skunks. And here we're at the end of uh, March, but they're still dealing with snow. The ground's still frozen. There's not a whole lot of food around. So keeping them in their home range as is they know where all the food supplies are they know where all the bags of dog food the compost piles someone's trash they've left around uh so we're much better off for the skunk to just put a one-way door on and let them go to the neighbors uh, it doesn't work every situation sometimes you get jobs where uh you can't really effectively put a one-way door on you can't really seal everything up or there's a high chance of the skunk's just burrowing back under you know, it's just a waste of time and money, um, resources. Uh, but in this one in particular, we can set up the one-way door, so we'll get it hooked up and give you some pictures of that and uh, get these skunks here in Bucksport moving on to the neighbors. So, all right, let's get to work. <clears throat> all right, so our one-way door is now set up. We'll get this piece of wood on the top just because we want to keep any of the melting snow that's coming off and dripping on there and then freezing on us and freezing our trap up. But, simple one-way door. So it opens up as they push through, closes, and they can't get back in. They don't negotiate it because in order to open that door up, they actually have to stand on the, um, the cage itself. And because they have several other places that they, they can live in around the neighborhood, they don't bother trying to work that hard. Now, occasionally you get one that does try really super hard if you have a, a home where um, it's not a solid foundation, like this concrete foundation, um, it's more of a shed, ground's really soft, they're going to try really hard. We may have to come and trap them, relocate them. It does happen. Um, this isn't an all-or-nothing-every-time fix. <clears throat> but when we can use it, a situation like here, they can go off the neighbors. They know where there's all... I've seen several sheds up the road uh, with this gaps where they come in. You can see old granite foundations just up the road here at other houses uh, where you can see where it looks like skunks have already started to be, be, to be digging a little bit. Um, the ground's still pretty frozen, especially on this. We're on the north side of the house. <clears throat> Lots of snow. The ground's going to be frozen here for a while. It's just starting to soften hardly at all. Um, but this isn't the only den in this whole neighborhood. I mean, male skunks will travel up to a mile in a night. A square mile is huge. You know how many houses are in a square mile here? I have no idea. 500? I don't know. It's quite a few. Uh, so there's plenty of places them, for them to go to. And it's they have a much higher likelihood of surviving using a one-way door 
in this situation than if we were to trap and relocate them to a whole new area where they'd have to find new shelter, new food, new water, and compete with other skunks. Um, so long run, this is a much cheaper option for the homeowner, um, much less wear and tear for me, um, and a much more humane option for the skunk. So that's pretty much it. We'll get our one-way door set up for our skunks. Last thing we do is make sure we put this back on. And that's just really to keep, we got water dripping. Here we are at the end of March, we got water dripping off the houses, some of the roof melts, some of the snow on the roof melts. Comes down, splashing, and we just don't want to splash onto the trap and freeze it up tonight when things cool back down. So that's really it for now. Once we get the skunks out of here, we'll make some checks every couple days. Then we'll seal this hole back up, probably get some mortar, some concrete, patch it up so it's solid so we don't have a problem into the future and call it good. So thanks for watching guys. See ya.